In this lesson we will learn about NumPy indexing and slicing. Indexing allows us to access individual elements in an array. Slicing allows us to access multiple elements. Indexing and slicing of NumPy arrays works in a similar way to indexing and slicing standard Python lists, but there are differences. The main difference is that arrays support multidimensional slicing. In addition, NumPy uses views to implement slices, which means that slices share the same data as the original array. With a list, a slice makes a copy of the original list data. First, we will look at indexing. As we said, indexing selects a single element from the array. We can read or modify that element. Indexing in one dimension uses the same syntax as list indexing. The index starts at zero. So for example, A1 selects the second element of the array. Here is a graphical representation of a three element array created from a list using the NumPy array function. If we assign A1 to X, this will set X to the value of 2. If we assign 5 to A1, this will change element 1 from value 2 to value 5. For two dimensional NumPy arrays, the element is indexed by two numbers, the row number followed by the column number. For example, A12 selects the second row, then the third column. Notice that the two values are both enclosed within the square brackets, separated by a comma. The row and column ordering used by NumPy is the same scheme that spreadsheets normally use. That works well if the NumPy array is storing row and column data. However, you need to be careful with other types of data. For example, image data normally uses XY coordinates. The Y coordinate corresponds to the row, and the X coordinate corresponds to the column. You will probably have to swap the X and Y coordinates when using image data. Here is an example array created from a two-dimensional list using the array function. Arrow I indicates the first coordinate, the row, and J represents the second coordinate, the column. Here is how we access element A12. This selects row 1, the second row, and column 2, the third column, which contains the value 6. Here is a three-dimensional array. It can be thought of as a set of two-dimensional arrays, each on a separate sheet. The coordinates select the sheet, then the row, then the column. We have separated the sheets out in this diagram, so you can see all the values. It shows element A201. This selects sheet 2, row 0, column 1, which contains the value 31. Notice that all three coordinates are enclosed within the square brackets, separated by commas. Here is the same thing in code. We create the array from a three-dimensional list using the array function. Of course, a NumPy array can have more than three dimensions. In fact, it can have any number of dimensions. We won't show more than three dimensions because it gets quite difficult to visualize. Now we will move on to slicing. Slicing allows us to select a set of elements from an array. We can then read or modify those elements. Slicing a one-dimensional array is quite similar to slicing a list. It uses the same notation and has a similar effect. For example, the slice 1 colon 4 selects elements from 1 up to but not including 4, that is elements 1, 2 and 3. If we assign this slice to variable b, then b will hold a three-element array. We can also assign a new array to the slice which will overwrite just the elements of the slice. The array we assign must be the exact same size and shape as the slice we are replacing. 
There's one important difference between list slices and array slices. When you slice a list, the slice contains a copy of the section of the list. When you slice an array, the slice points to the same data as the array. We will go into more detail later. Here are some other features of slicing, which again are similar to list slicing. If we omit the first value, the slice will start from the start of the array. If we omit the second value, the slice will continue to the end of the array. And finally, we can add a third value that corresponds to a step. So colon colon 2 slices every second element from the start of the array to the end of the array. NumPy also allows you to slice a two-dimensional array in a way that lists don't support. Here's an example array we will use to illustrate this. We can select a region by slicing the rows and columns independently. In this case, the row slice is 1 colon. This slices from element 1 to the end of the array, that is the second, third and fourth rows. The column slice is 2 colon 4. This slice is the third and fourth column. The resulting slice is a 3 by 2 array containing the elements that are in the selected rows and columns. We can select any rectangular subset of the array in this way. There is another possibility too. We can use an index for the row, but a slice for the column. In this example, we have selected row 1 and used a slice that includes every column. So the slice is the whole of row 1. Because we've used an index rather than a slice for the row, what we get back is a one-dimensional array. We can do the same with columns. Here we've sliced the whole of column 2, and again the result is a one-dimensional array. Now let's look at the case for the 3D array. This is just an extension of the 2D case. Here we have used three slices. The first dimension has a slice 0 colon 2, which selects the first and second sheet. The second has a slice 1 colon 3, which selects the second and third rows. The third dimension has a slice 0 colon 2, which selects the first and second columns. The resulting slice is a 2 by 2 by 2 array containing the values that match those slices. You can select any cuboid region of the array in this way. Here is another case. We have used an index 1 in the second dimension, which means we are selecting every element that has a row value of 1. This gives us a horizontal sheet as shown. Since we have indexed one dimension, the resulting array is a 2D array. Of course, we could apply the same technique to a different dimension to select a sheet in a different orientation. In this next example, we have used a slice for the first dimension, but we have used index 0 for the row and index 2 for the column. This selects a one dimensional row composed of the corresponding element in each slice. It is possible to select a row along any axis using the same technique. Finally, we will learn about NumPy views. When we slice an array, it doesn't create a copy of the data in the original array. Instead, it creates a new view of the same data. The view uses the same underlying data, but it allows NumPy to index the data in a different way. The reason NumPy does this is for, effic this is for efficiency. NumPy is often used to store very large amounts of data, and of course you don't want to create copies of the data unless it is necessary. Copying large data sets takes time and uses up memory. It's worth remembering that arrays are different to lists in this respect. So here's an example 2D array. Although the array represents rows and columns, computer memory is one dimensional. Memory consists of a list of locations that are addressed sequentially. A view allows NumPy to know where to look for each element. This section describes the basic concept of views. It isn't intended to describe exactly how views are implemented within NumPy. 
Here is how the data might be stored in memory. There are 20 elements in the array, and NumPy stores them as a single list in 20 locations, one after the other. For NumPy to treat this data as a 2D array, it needs to store some extra information. For example, it needs to know where the data starts. We will say it starts at zero, relative to the start of the data block. We also need to know how many rows and columns are in the data, of course. Another important value is the stride. The stride is the distance from the start of one row to the start of the next. In this case, the stride is equal to the number of columns, but that won't always be the case. We can calculate the position of the element from the formula shown. Now we will take a slice of the array as shown. How do we access the slice without copying the data? The answer is that we create a new view. In this view, the first row starts at position 7 in the data block. The slice has three rows and two columns. But importantly, the stride is still 5. The gap between the start of the first row, value 17, and the start of the next row, value 22, is still 5. If we use the original data and the original formula, but with the different view parameters, we will access the slice correctly.